light of the gospel broadcast and uh, uh, want to thank you for uh, tuning in to light of the gospel broadcast this wonderful day. And may the Lord bless you as you watch this, um, this broadcast today. Well, today I want to speak a little bit on the reality of hell, the reality of hell. And uh, hell is a real place. And we're going to turn in the Word of God to the Gospel of Luke chapter 16, verse uh, 19 through 31. Luke uh, chapter 16, verse 19 through 31. Yes. And the Word of God said, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared some sumptuously every day, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of swords, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that a beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, uh, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham, and so forth. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, uh, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Verse 26, And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great God fixed so that they which would pass from hence uh, could, uh, they that would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest uh, send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto them, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, then will they, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophet, neither will they be persuaded to one rose uh, from the dead. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for everyone that is listening today. Father God, uh, this message on the reality of hell, O oh God Almighty, because hell is a real place. I pray and ask that you bless those in the church and those, O oh God, and, and uh, that is watching this broadcast, O oh Father God. Father God, I pray that souls will repent, get saved, O oh God, and live right for God, live their life for Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask you that you'll hide me behind the cross. Help me to only speak the thing you desire for me to speak. That your name will be glorified and someone will get saved, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So today I want to talk on the reality of hell. Uh, I'd like to read some other scriptures taken from uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 4 through 6. And the word of God said, For if God, for if God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness, uh, to be reserved unto judgment, and spare not the whole world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And torn in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. There in, in the Bible here, uh, the first portion of scripture we saw, the record was with uh, Lazarus and the rich man. And that is not a parable, that is a real story that happened in the days of Moses. But Jesus Christ is all-knowing. He knows everything. He 
is God and God the Son and the Son of God and he brought back that story from the Old Testament 2,000 years ago while he was telling people about the reality of hell. Then here the Apostle Peter, he also is telling people about hell. He's preaching about hell, how God did not spare even the angels of sin and rebel against God in heaven, but he has cast them down into hell. May I say hell is not the common man grave like some false uh, preaching is going on today. Hell is not the burial ground. Hell is not the common man uh, grave. Hell is a place with torments. Now I want to turn to another scripture here in uh, Psalm chapter, uh, Psalms chapter 9 and verse 17. Psalms chapter 9 and verse 17 say, The wicked shall be torn into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Boy, there's a lot of people, according to the word of God, are going to hell. But let me say that uh, God don't want anyone to go to hell. He wants everybody to go to heaven. The Bible says, the word of God says, Luke uh, chapter, uh, Luke chapter uh, 9, Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. You know why Jesus came into the world? is to seek and to save that which was lost. He come to give us a second chance. Praise the Lord. According to the word of God, everyone that's born into this world is already on their way to hell. But Jesus made a way of escape so they could get eternal life. You know what? There is no sin so great that can take somebody, that can prevent somebody from going to heaven. You know what prevents people from going to heaven? Their disbelief in Jesus Christ. Hell is a reality. Hell is a real place with real souls facing real torments according to the word of God. There is a crossing boundary to hell. Once you cross that boundary, there is no way out of hell. There is no way out of hell. There is no way out of hell once you cross that boundary. There is no way out of hell. While you have the breath of life, Jesus is the one to take you out of hell. Hallelujah. Why not give Jesus a chance to come into your heart and your life? There are a couple of things I want us to see today. Number one, we want to see the description of hell. The description means how hell is described according to the word of God. Hell is a flame of fire. In the word of God, if you look in the Bible, in Luke uh, chapter 16 and verse 24, hell's uh, description is a flame of fire. The word of God said in, in Luke 16, 24, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And sent Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Hell is a flame of fire. The word of God said so. Secondly, hell is a furnace of fire. That is a second description. And I have about six description of hell here I'm going to give you. So number one description of hell is a flame of fire. Luke 16, 24. Then uh, uh, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 42 say, Hell is described as a furnace of fire. Matthew 13, 42 say, And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. They shall be wailing a gnashing of teeth. Third description, a hell is described as a lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 15 say, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hell 
is described as a lake of fire. Then 14, hell is described as a place of darkness. You think when you get power out it is dark? Hell is darker than that. Hell is described as a place of darkness. Matthew 8, 12 says, But the chain of the kingdom shall be cast out into darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 2 Peter 2, 4 says, For if God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down in hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Hell is described fifthly as a place, place of sorrow. Psalm 18, 5 says, The sorrows of hell come past me about, and the snare of death prevented me. Sixthly, hell is described as a place of torments. Torments. Luke 16, 24 says, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and said, Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Hell is a place where the worm dieth not. I met some people that say, oh, I don't like worms. Well, you best don't go to hell. You best accept Jesus as your Savior. The worms don't die in hell. You mean hell is so hot and the worm don't die? Well, you Google it and you will see that there are worms surviving under the ocean in the volcanic, volcanic uh, uh, heat down in the bottom of the ocean somewhere there. Over a thousand degrees, worms survive and they only can survive that. Maybe that is the way they were created. That is why Jesus came, amen, to deliver us from hell. A place where the worms died, my mark 944 said, where the worm died not, and the fire is not quenched. Hell will not be quenched. And we see the description of hell. Now, you might say, but where is the location of hell? The word of God gives us the location of hell. And we'll see the location of hell. The Bible says, uh, uh, you know, Jesus said heaven is above and hell is beneath. Isaiah 14, chapter 14 and verse 15, the word of God said, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit, where the sons of Korah rebel against the man of God, they went straight to hell in the Bible. What a sad day that was when Moses came down from the mountain. Yes. And when he came down with the Ten Commandments. And he said, who is on the Lord's side? Come with me. And the son of Korah said, you know what? We don't want to follow. We don't want to follow this Moses. We want to follow this golden calf. This is the golden calf that leads us out of Egypt. By the way, idolatry is still sinful, amen? When people bow down to idols and worship them, that is abomination, that is against God. Whether in some other religion or whether in Christianity, people are bowing down and call those statues, Mary statue and Jesus statue and statue of angels, that is against God. The Bible said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Only God we should have is the Almighty God and the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So, the son of Torah said, this, this is a God that delivers us. And Moses, right when he threw down the commandment, he broke it. And let me say this, the, the Bible says, right there in the Bible says, hell opened her mouth. Hell opened her mouth and swallowed the sons of Korah. That is what the word of God say. Or hell swallow them. Amen. People like to test God. Look what is happening in Brazil. Right now it's still raining. Judgment is taking over that country and if those people don't go out to the street and tell God is sorry, 
for mocking his son. Amen. When we part in Sao Paulo for 30 days, and the city is sinking. Let me tell you, judgment is on that nation because they mock the Son of God. The location of hell, hell is beneath the earth. I don't understand it all. I don't want to understand it. I don't want to know. I want to believe what God's word say. And I don't want to go to that place. Right now, uh, uh, met a couple years ago, the Chinese, they, they drill a hole in, in the earth and they push the microphone and they can hear the voices like human beings screaming. You Google it, look it up on the YouTube, you will find what I'm saying is true, folks. Hell is a real place. Do you know the core of the earth is what? It's lava. It's fire, it's lava. It's, it, 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 it can be compared like a lake of fire. And let me tell you, the Bible is written when scientists never did discover that beneath the earth has like a lake of fire that's running. Our listening folks, more than half of the earth in the core, the center of the earth is fire that's running. Amen. Let me say, we see hell's description and hell's location. Let me say this, uh, the Torah tor may not only have description and health location, but we see here the inhabitants of hell. Who are the ones that will inhabit hell? Who are the ones hell was created for? Well, in every country, almost every country, the government has a prison. If the government has a prison to lock down people and prevail against the state, and violate the laws of the state, how much more God has more sense. And God created hell, not for mankind really, but for the devil and his angels, the angels to rebel against God. You think there are over seven billion people living in the world, and you might say, well, that is plenty. But according to the Bible, the angels are without numbers. Million, billion, trillion, zillion, big numbers, amen? According to the Bible, there are many, many, many angels. And uh, the angels that rebel against God will end up in hell. Matthew well, the inhabitants of hell is the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, from verse 41 said, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye are cur ye cursed into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Who Jesus was talking to? They are people. Jesus said, Not all who said, Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but them who do the will of God, them who accept him, them who love him. There are many churches, and you might be looking today on TV or internet or in the church, but there are many people who call themselves Christian, but they are just putting on a show, they are just being religious, but they are lost and on their way to hell. This Christian life is not about putting on a show. It's not about, you know, putting on this big show and, and you don't have Jesus inside of you. Many religious folks will find themselves in hell. Many lost people will find themselves in hell. Many people who went to church will end up in hell because uh, they went to church, they said, Lord, Lord, and in their lips, they, they say they love him, but their heart are far from him. God wants us to accept him with our heart and not our mouth, not our lips. The inhabitants of hell is the fallen angels and those that rejected Jesus Christ. Not only the devil and his angels, but Christ's rejectors also will end up in hell. Those that reject Jesus Christ, 
You mean you say, Pastor, over the, the, the world have uh, billions of people and people go to hell? Yes, the Bible says everyone that rejected Jesus Christ, everyone that is out of Jesus Christ, they will end up in the pit of hell with the devil and the fallen angels. You say, how soon can somebody go to hell? According to the Bible, Lazarus and the rich man, when they died, Lazarus was saved. He went to heaven with God and Father Abraham. But immediately the rich man, the rich man, the rich man, the rich man that who and uh, his riches was, was his God. He had no time for God. He only had time to make money. And his money was his God. His money gave him power. He had no time with the poor people. And with God, he rejected God. And he went straight to hell after death. According to the word of God, after death, people will either go to heaven or hell. Where are you going today? According to God's word. Did you really accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Are you allowed the riches of this world to blind you from who God is? He wants to save you. He wants to have a relationship with you. His name is Jesus Christ. Matthew 7, 21 say, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew 7, 22 say, Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name done many a wonderful works? Matthew 7, 23, then he said, and he answered, I profess. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Having a great church, having uh, casting out devils and all of that, doing wonders and signs, does mean that you will go to heaven. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. The word of God is a tool and anyone can use it to do great things. But some people use the word of God and are lost still. They never accept Jesus Christ. They do it as a career to build their own life and never accept Jesus as their Savior. We see hell's description, hell's location, and hell's inhabitants. Then we see hell's activity. One time one guy said, well, I don't want to go to heaven because, you know, if I go to heaven, I'll have wings and I'll be uncomfortable. Well, he had it all around. One guy said, I want to go to hell. Why hell, we'll have a great party there. In heaven, you can't party, you can't drink, you can't sport, you can't do pop, you can't do all of those things. I, I, in heaven don't have no nightclub, in heaven don't have no strip club, and all of that this guy told me, he said, I want to go to hell. Well, better believe it, hell will not have that too. And the devil will be the boss in hell. And you don't want him to be your boss in hell, and the fallen angel. The activities, there will be some activities in hell. The Bible says in Matthew 8, 12, For the chain of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When it says the chain of the kingdom will be cast out, it means that there are people that who get the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ and never did. You know, if somebody who love church, if somebody don't love this Christian life, they just hit the mess, they just, they just go to church occasionally, accidentally. Most obviously those folks are not saved. Because if somebody saved and love God, they don't want to go to church. Every opportunity arises. They shall be weeping a national teeth in 
hell. There will be crying for relief in hell. The Bible says in Luke 16, 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. There will be a cry for mercy. Then you know in hell, the third activity, not only weeping the national feet, not only crying for relief, but there will be good remembrance. There will be a good memory of the past in hell. And the thing about hell, every soul that ends up in hell will be there forever. It's easy. All Jesus wants you to do is accept him as your savior and then live for him. There will be great memory. The Bible says in Luke 16, 25, but Abraham said, son, Remember that thou and thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise thou was evil things, but now he's comforted and thou art tormented. What a what a awful memory. That this man he he lived, he was wealthy, had everything in life, he had servants. He, had, he, he lived very luxuriously. He, he eat whatever he, he wanted every day. If he wanted to sleep in a different house, he, he could afford it. The Bible described him as a very wealthy man. And Lazarus was a poor man, but every day I believe Lazarus would say, Lord, forgive me, O God. Lord, I accept you as my Savior. On the other hand, uh, the rich man, he would say, uh, probably said, you know what? Look, look what I have, look what I achieved. There is no one like me. I know some people like that in Guyana and around the world. All they cared about is what they achieved and not the great creator. They said in lips they love him, but in their heart they deny him because of the actions. Let me say hell is not a good place to be, but you don't have to go to hell because Jesus came to seek and to save the truth of God. He came that you can have eternal life. There is no one else that can save you from the pit of hell. In the word of God in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, the Bible said, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Only Jesus can save us. Only Jesus can save a soul. And when you accept him to save, he'll save you once and forever. You said, Pastor, you, you heard a message about hell clearly, and you don't want to go to hell. You want to accept Jesus as your Savior. Why not right now, left everything what you are doing and say this prayer. For those who want to say it can say it. If you never accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, why not bow and pray and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as I am. I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart and save me. And give me to a life that when I die, heaven will be my home. For those that are watching my TV, you just accept the Lord as your Savior and on your way to heaven. Why not give us a call on the number that you will see on the screen shortly. So we can help you to live your brand new life in Jesus Christ. God richly bless you. Until next time.